good morning. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. I am so happy to be back at BHB for the entire week. I will not go... Okay, I might go on a trip later this week, but I'm not 100% sure about that. The truth is, is that it's going to be nice to be home for at least four, five, six days, and I might be home for as long as 12 or 13 days, depending on if I decide to travel at all. I am here and I am committed to trying to get things back together. Lori has just been a trooper. She's been working her butt off for the last six or seven weeks with me not being around. And as a matter of fact, Lori's going to be feeding Colubrids today, which I'll take you guys along on that journey. And she just loves vlogging with you guys. Right, Lori? Yeah. Lori is just so excited every day to wake up and have a camera in her face. That's what she lives for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is is that Lori is working very hard and I want you guys to comment down below to her what you think about her abilities of vlogging because everyone says that it's amazing and without her quite frankly <laughs> no that is not what everybody says <laughs> no one has said anything bad about your vlogging nobody has said that my vlogging ability is amazing <laughs> uh, absolutely as a matter of fact someone even said that your editing ability was really amazing <laughs> wow that's pretty good see so I've never edited <laughs> <laughs> well the truth is is that I couldn't do what I do if it wasn't for Lori she supports everything I do not only the vlog but all the travel and all all the animals and everything like that because although she loves the animals I'm the one that really has started this kind of thing and she supported me so I appreciate her and she's gonna be continuing to feed colubrids as for me I don't know what I'm gonna get into but I'm gonna figure it out let's make today an awesome day let's get this started just did the kind of all my snakes in one video vlog and a lot of people asked me to do the same on leopard geckos. Now I'm not going to spend this entire vlog on leopard geckos but I did think I would just kind of showcase some of my really cool leopard geckos and I have thousands of leopard geckos so I'm not going to spend thousands of hours doing this but take a look at this really quick. This is actually a bell white and yellow. Now the bell is an albino recessive mutation and the white and yellow is incomplete dominant. So uh, I absolutely love the way that those two things kind of go together. This one even takes it one step further. This is actually a bold bell white and yellow. So it's the bell albino and the white and yellow but with the bold patterning. I mean take a look at that little guy right there. And it's a little bit of a hyper monkey too. I mean it really wants to keep rolling. Now there's another type of albino that's called a tremper albino but this would actually be what we can we actually call a dark tremper albino with that really cool bold pattern not bold as far as stripe but bold as far as these big squares on their back so that's just a project that we've kind of been working on trying to kind of develop a darker line whereas a lot of our influence is really going towards the lighter more beautiful geckos every now and then we want to go the other way and speaking of a light and beautiful animal take a look at this right here this is actually a snow white and yellow and it's a little bit it hypo too and the hypo just means that it's kind of reduced pattern not as much black and this one certainly is reduced pattern I mean take a look at how gorgeous that is again that is a max snow white and yellow wow I tell you what that is a gorgeous animal let's take a look at this one down here take a look at this right here this is actually a sun glow tremper white and yellow. Again, the sun glow is that hypo gene, which is sun glow is actually a hypo albino. And of course, it's the tremper albino. And then you have that white and yellow that just goes wham and just makes that thing so incredibly gorgeous. I mean, my gosh, take a look at that animal. Again, geckos just come in so many colors and flavors. And earlier, I showed you the bold bell white and yellow. This happens to be just the bold bell. So you kind of get the idea of that bold stripe and the bell albino recessive mutation. So it's really cool. Now there's three different types of albinos. There's the Bell, there's the Vegas, and there's the Tremper. Some people call the Vegas the rainwater line as well. But uh, they're all really cool. I mean, I personally think the Bell is the nicest, but that's just my opinion. Uh, this happens to be a Max Snow Raptor 
stripe. So again, that stripe is just that dorsal striping there. The max note is a co-dominant and the tremper is a recessive, but then the raptor, or take a look at those eyes right there. And that's what the eclipse is making it a raptor, which is basically just a red eye eclipse animal. And uh, the original one were actually patternless. That's where the P from raptor came from. But now you can actually have raptors that aren't patternless, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's one thing about geckos is that some of the things that happens with them, the naming, the, the pattern, it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so I don't expect anyone to grasp it because I've been working on them now for four or five years and I don't totally grasp it 100% but nevertheless they're really amazing animals. And this is an example of a raptor not being a patternless animal. You can see the eye pigment is there. It's got that crazy kind of almost cross-eyed look but you can see it's certainly not patternless. This happens to be a Mac Tremper raptor so it's actually a raptor plus a snow but you can see it certainly has plenty of pattern but again that eclipse gene making it a raptor does whack out the pattern a little bit which makes it kind of neat but again you know there's a million different colors and flavors and and there's so much more in the future too because every time there's a new mutation like the lemon frost then you can breed it into every other mutation making it that much more interesting so you know when you get a hundred or two hundred gecko mutations you can literally turn that two hundred into thousands this happens to be an albino Murphy's patternless stripe. Now that's really cool. The albino happens to be the Tremper albino and the Murphy's patternless is a recessive mutation as well. So that's a really beautiful animal right there. This happens to be a blood tangerine white and yellow. So the blood tangerine is more of a reddish color than an orangish color and then this is a white and yellow. And look at the mask on that. The head pattern is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you know, the thing is, I mean, this all these are geckos here. On the other side are geckos here. And again, all our adults are over there. So we just have so many geckos so I could just go through just for hours and open up cages and go oh my god look at amazing and look at this as a matter of fact this happens to be an emmerine white and yellow now the emmerine is a mutation that is actually pulling out a little bit different color kind of a greenish color this doesn't have a lot of green to it but it certainly has an interesting pattern and that white and yellow and the emmerine together make some really cool mutations and again that head pattern is absolutely gorgeous oh, one of my favorite mutations and I talk about this all the the time would happen to be the super snows. I mean, take a look at that, but this is actually a super snow white and yellow. Now the super snow are just quite frankly, it's a the super version of a max snow. So when you breed a max snow to a normal, on average, you're gonna get 50% snows right off the rip. And then when you breed two max snows together, on average, one and four are gonna be super snows. And then of course the white and yellow is an incomplete dominant, which means that about 50% of the mutations are gonna be white and yellow. So you you mix the white and yellow and the super snow together and it makes a really cool animal. Take a look at this animal right here. Look at that. It's like a paradoxing. And again, this has just got a whole bunch of things going on in it, but that paradoxing on its head looks super, super cool. I mean, I don't know, you know, it's probably not a genetic mutation, but it still just makes for a super cool looking animal. Uh, and most paradoxing is a random thing. So a lot of times it's in albinos, but it can also be in other mutations where you just have kind of a a bleeding of a certain type of mutation through. So if it's an albino, sometimes there's normal pigment that will bleed through a little bit and that gives it that, that kind of paradoxing or blotching color. Take a look at this guy right here. Whew. This is actually another one of our tangerines right here, but this is a new line that we're working with. So we just call it a new tangerine line because we've kind of pioneered this one, just breeding the most orange animals together. And man, I tell you what, that is a really pretty animal. Oh, and you know, I tell you, I've always said that one, and I say this a lot, but one of my favorite geckos certainly is the bold snow. This is again, the max snow, and that bold pattern is that striping on it. But that's just such a cool gecko. I tell you. So anyways, guys, like I said, I'm not going to take up the whole vlog and, and just spend, you know, 15 minutes talking about leopard geckos, but I wanted to give you guys the overview of a few animals that kind of caught my eye. I was literally just sliding open racks and saying, oh, let's talk about this one. Let's talk about this one. Again, you can see this whole row over here uh, of some of these babies over here. And then again, this whole row over here are all leopard geckos. So I could uh, show you guys leopard geckos for days. And again, we have our adult leopard geckos over here. All these guys here 
that are starting to lay eggs like crazy and we're going to have a lot of really cool leopard geckos this year. As a matter of fact, I mentioned earlier that I upgraded my geckos this year by adding uh, you know, more interesting animals from last year's production that were big enough to breed. And you can kind of start to see, we're just incubating eggs like this. These are all eggs here. I mean, take a look at all these eggs. All of these racks are nothing but eggs. I mean, there are tons of eggs and we are just getting going. So, hey, in another you know month, we're gonna have thousands and thousands of leopard gecko eggs, which means that in a couple months, we're gonna have thousands and thousands of baby leopard geckos. So I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of a leopard gecko geek out. Now back to your normal scheduled vlog. You know, a lot of times in the vlog and kind of in the things I do with snake bites and so on like that, I usually think about them before I even start talking. You know, maybe I think about a topic or a way I want to go about it. But right now, I'm going to just come to you guys and, and talk to you as you're my friends, you know. I've been on the roll for the last maybe seven weeks traveling a tremendous amount, being away from my family, being away from my business, being away from my animals uh, for a large part of that time. And, you know, it's been exciting. You know, I've been able to see a lot of things, do a lot of things, uh, you know, meet a lot of great people. And, and it's been really exciting. But I think that I was happy that I'm home right now. You know, I need to be here with my family. I need to be here with my business. You know, things are changing. And that's that's something that, you know, is always happening in my life. You know, over the last you know quarter of a century as I've been in business, I've always been evolving into something, you know, I don't like to stay still, I don't like to stay stagnant, and some people don't like that, to be honest with you. They don't like the fact that I change, and, and maybe they want me to be the BHB of five years ago, and because I'm becoming more interested in, in the, the outreach of vlogging and, and YouTubing and television, some people look at it almost as I've turned the, my back on, on what really got me here, and that couldn't be further from the truth, you know. I really love the animals, and I love everything about being with the animals but I want to continue to expand my horizons you know I want to keep trying to push those boundaries and seeing what we achieve and and ultimately trying to find the balance between achieving things and finding happiness in the journey so uh, and I I'll be honest with you you know a lot of people comment about how positive I am and how upbeat I am but you know I have my times we all have our times you know where things get to me I get overwhelmed I I feel like the world is against me but in the end you've got to keep pushing forward you know what I mean and and, and try to grasp as much happiness as you can and and that's the balance in life, you know, and that's what I'm trying to achieve. And and I can't thank you guys enough for coming along on this journey. I'm going to be honest with you, daily vlogging is so much more than I ever thought it was going to be. And, and I mean that in a bunch of ways. So much more fun because I get to be creative constantly. So much more consuming and so much more work than I ever thought it was gonna be. I mean, think about it, people. I've had three days off since the middle of November. It, it, and, and one day I was sick. One day I was traveling for you know 12 or 14 hours on a plane so I didn't vlog. And then finally I slept the other day for like the whole day. So uh, three days, you know, and, and I don't really have a scheduled day off until next January 2nd. I've told you guys on the vlog before that January 2nd, don't expect a vlog because I'm gonna take that day off uh, and it's demanding but at the same time I love it I don't know where the future is but I know as long as you guys are there to support me and continue to be as awesome as you are I'm gonna do my best to bring you guys a vlog each day and and hopefully you'll fall in love with my lifestyle you know and and what I believe in and, and that and, and start to understand that I love wildlife and that's who I am but that I'm more than that I, I don't just do wildlife I have other ideas and aspirations in life and and I'm excited about the future and I think that's ultimately what you should be too right is excited about the future because if you're not excited about the future then it's time to change so anyways that's it I just thought I'd take a few minutes and be as real as I possibly can with you guys not scripted not thought out not anything so that's it so you guys have a great rest of your day I'm gonna get back to it what do you want to
Okay everyone, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down tonight. I'd like to know from you guys, I'm gonna be in town for a little while, so what would you like to see? Would you like to see us go do something exciting? Would you like to see specific types of animals? Would you like to see some more behind the scenes about what me and Lori are doing and how we're running BHB? Let me know down in the comments what you guys want me to do and I'll be happy to share that with you. It's gonna be so nice to be home for a little while. It feels weird to be honest with you to not have a trip planned tomorrow or the next day. So it's pretty cool. But hey, some things may change. You just never know. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you guys really enjoyed it. You guys mean the world to me. You know that. Do me a favor and smash that like button and hit that notification bell for me. Be kind to somebody. I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.